All right, uh, so welcome everybody. This is our first session of the main campaign for Dalareth's Return. Uh, I'm just going to let everybody uh, introduce themselves and the characters that they're going to be playing today. Hey, I'm Jesse, and I will be playing Tempest Halfman, Half Orc Barbarian. Hi, uh, my name's Richter. I am playing a Elven Bard, Katiara. And basically, I'm in search of fame and fortune and getting myself a noble as a patron. Hi, I'm Miyaka. I play Miri Brightwood. I am a asthma cleric. Uh, my god is Foltus. Hi, I'm Romy, and I'll be playing Yzmir Rigdrasil, or Yzmir. And she is my half dragon warlock. I'm Tally. Uh, I'm playing a elvish ranger. Uh, if you've been in town for any period of time, you have probably heard a kerfuffle with some of the nobles. Um, Tally was, uh, I mean, Yurine was distinctly uh, rejected by uh, the heir of one of the noble houses recently, um, Jora Damaline. Um, he has wants nothing to do with her. So um, that's it. All right. Um, so uh, a little bit of the setting. You guys uh, are in deep winter right now in the city of Nordgard, which is far to the north of the main empire itself. Uh, the nearest city is a two and a half to three months walk to the south on the, the Nord Road. Uh, there are some smaller uh towns and hamlets uh, up in this region as well. Um, but it's uh, when, when we're starting the campaign, it's, uh, for, for lack of a better word, a dark and stormy night. Um, the snow is falling and a half-orc approaches the gates to the city where our warlock is currently on guard. Tempest is going to approach the walls of the city about how high are they what what do, what do the walls look like uh they're about uh, 15 feet tall stone um not tall enough that uh, people can actually stand on them and uh and pace guard uh behind them uh they're just there to m mostly keep the elements and raiders out do i see a portal or a means of entrance Yes, there is a, uh, a road that's um, a, a little bit shallower snow than the rest. And is there an open gate, or is everything closed off due to the weather? Uh, the gate is open, and uh, there are there is a small guard shack outside. I am going to walk through the door. If there's anybody at the guard shack, I'll give them a nod as I walk past, but I'm walking in like I own the place. Uh, Yzmir, you are in the guard shack and you see a, a stranger half-orc uh, attempting to enter the city with a nod. Uh, and Yzmir basically gets up off her duel and gets to the door and it's like whoa 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 where are you going this is the city of nordgard yes yes but what are you doing just walking in there what's your business here nothing too serious i'm just here to speak with the rulers of your city Why do you need to speak to the rulers? Uh, that is between me and them. I can't just let you go traipsing off down the street. I accept you your message? I accept your offer as an escort. Or you could wait here. And I will see if someone can come help you. Happy to. My name is Tempest. 
Tempest. All right. And without another word, Tempest will sit down in the snow and cross his arms. Is there anyone Yzmir can get to quickly to be like, hey, this guy showed up? <laughs> Where is the uh, gate relative to, say, the Temple of Foltus? Uh, sorry, I was just pulling up my maps. Um, the gate is on the east side of town, and the Temple of Foltus is on the west side of town. So it's pretty far away. Um, probably the closest thing uh, that Yzmir would uh, think to go to would be... Hmm, there's an Explorer's Guild near the gate. Um, there's a couple of uh, temples. There's the Spruce Inn uh, just inside the gate. And uh, then you're starting to get into the middle of town, which is a little bit further away. Okay, there's no one she can answers to who she could go be like, hey, there's a half orc or I guess a good impression is, is it a big deal if he just walks in? Like, how big of a That's deal? entirely up to you. It's, it's, it's your call. Uh, is this on the east side of the town? Yes. Yes, this is happening on the east side. What's that inn called again? Uh, there's uh, an inn just inside the gates called the Spruce Inn. It's uh, known for being a little bit rough. Okay, knowing that and seeing Tempest just sit in the snow, Yzmir is going to just... <sighs> Look, there's an inn just inside the gate, the, the Spruce Inn. Just go in there and see if there's someone who can get you that ear with the with the leaders. Tempest is going to snap his head up and look over, um, dislodging some of the snow that has probably been falling on him at this point. And he is going, his eyes are going to widen and he's going to say, are you offering me hearth and shelter? No, I don't live there. Oh, then he's just going to uh, sit in the snow and say, no, I'm happy to wait. Thank you. Can you at least tell me why you want to talk to them so I can make sure I get you the right person? Uh, he'll shrug and say, I am Tempest, half man of the Jagged Tusk Orc tribe. I am here as an envoy of my people. All right, then. If he doesn't look like he's going to move, Yzmir is going to go either look for another guard just to be like, this is, there's a half orc who says he's an envoy wanting to talk to the leaders or something. And just so that someone can go look for someone to, he can talk to while she can keep an eye on him. He's not moving, still sitting in the snow, letting it pile up on him. Uh, yeah, there are uh, guards that make regular patrols around the city, so uh, it's not long before someone else comes that you could talk to. Okay, uh, she'll leave the gate post just long enough to go up to them and be like, hey, this guy just showed up saying he's an envoy from his group and wants to talk to the leaders. Can you find someone, please? It's the middle of the night. Who am I going to find at this hour? I don't know. <laughs> it's that or he wanders through town in the middle of the night. <laughs> Happy to do so. Uh, could, uh, is, it, 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 that can't be comfortable sitting in the snow like that. Uh, why don't... Uh, you you can if you want I uh, oh uh, sergeant how about you go and and uh, escort him to an inn and I will uh, take guard duty for now and you can come back later and I, I really want to hear about how this goes. <sighs> okay. okay. 
uh, Tempest, was it? You might as well come with me. Yes. What is your name? She just kind of gives him a look, debating, and then Yzmir. A pleasure to meet you, Yzmir. I will follow. Uh, so you do have a choice of a few different uh, inns that you could take them to. Uh, there is the Spruce Inn, which is uh, the closest to where you are. That's not a particularly ni nice place. Um, there's the, the Blue Lock, which is uh, closer to the middle of town, uh, kind of a, a mid-range place. There's the Lock and Key, uh, where you've had uh, positive experiences because you've stayed there before uh, you got your own place. Um, and that's uh, more towards the west side of town. Okay. Uh, for now, I think she'll lead him to the blue lock. And yeah, when she gets there, well, I guess unless he has something to say while they walk, she'll just kind of lead him there for now, <laughs> wondering what the heck she's going to do. He'll follow tamely behind her. Uh, he's only going to speak when spoken to, but he's looking around, trying to take in his surroundings as best he can in the in the dark night. And we'll uh, we'll follow where she leads. On the way, she'll uh, just mention, "Look, uh, you clearly came here with a purpose." and to get this message across, but walking through town in the middle of the night's not going to do you any good. So I'm going to take you to this in the blue lock and get you at least somewhat set up. Can you pay for the place? Yes. Okay, then I'll get you there and tomorrow you can figure out your business. Find whoever you need to talk to. Out of curiosity, do you know where the Explorers Guild is in town? Ryan, did we pass it? You sure did. Yuzmir just stops and is like, why do you want to go there? It is a matter of personal interest to me. And he'll look at you sideways for a second and say, if you want to know why... I will trade one of my secrets for one of your own. All right, I'll bite. Why do you want to go? Because I believe that my father is employed by the Explorers Guild, and I intend to reckon with him. Reckon with him, huh? Well, I wish you told me you, you were looking for it sooner. It's, we just pa asked it, so do you want to go there or the inn? If you are offering to guide me, the guild, please. So she'll just gesture and turn around and walk past him back the way they came towards the Explorers Guild. All right. Uh, so you get to the Explorers Guild, which is fairly close to the, the uh, gate, and it is closed for the night. Darn Tempest, it. having no reference as to what Sunday hours are, walks up to the door and starts pounding on it. No, please, wait. <clears throat> He'll turn and look back at Izmir and say, yes. They're not open. I hoped that someone would be, or someone would be around, but they're not open. Might have to take you to that inn anyway, and you can come back. Does not being open means there's no one inside? Nobody has uh, responded to your knocks. Yeah. No one's inside, or they're all asleep, and they'll be very angry <laughs> if you wake them up. So come on. Very well. And off to the blue inn, or blue lock. Okay, uh, you guys get to the blue lock inn, no problem. The half-orc uh, owner of uh, the Blue Lock Inn, Kerr, uh, welcomes you uh, this late in the night and uh, says, what can I do for you? Well, Tempest is following uh, Izmir's lead. 
this fellow here needs a at least a room for the night before he gets to his business in the morning. Can you put him up? Uh, I, I wish that I could. Unfortunately, all my rooms are full for the night. I have heard uh, that there is room at the lock and key to the west. It's a slightly more uh, expensive establishment, so they usually have rooms free. Thank you. I apologize for troubling you. And uh, he will turn to Izmir and say, I will be here if you will find me in the morning. And he's going to walk out the door. And she's going to look at Kerr all confused and then go out after him. He's sitting in, he's sitting in the snow again. <sighs> are, you, are you seriously just going to sit there all night? Yes. Well, you can see, clearly see how undecided she is, but he doesn't seem to be causing any trouble and, or anything like that. And she, he's just like, look, I have one more place you could probably stay the night as long as you don't cause me any trouble. He's just going to look at you expectantly. And she'll just gesture, come on. And she's going to lead him to her cottage. He will follow. Okay. Uh, so you guys head to the cottage. And she'll get him there and open the door, lead him in. And it's just like, you can stay here for the night. And as long as you find a place to stay tomorrow. And, uh, and he'll just look at her for a second and say, Am I given to understand that you are offering me hearth and home? You are offering me a place in your home? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. He bows and says, I thank you. And uh, we'll go over and uh, if there's like a little fireplace or just a place where he can stretch out on the floor, he will, uh, he will do so on the floor. And she's just kind of going to make sure he doesn't seem to be about to do anything. Like, he seems pretty content. And since He's she's already snoring. <laughs> then she, since she's technically on the clock, she's going to go back to her uh, guard duty, I guess. All right. So the night passes uneventfully. Um, and the next morning... As Miri is wakening for her dawn rites, uh, she has a vision, which I've shared with her in a private message. And uh, the city begins to stir. Uh, the snow has stopped, and the sun is coming out bright and crisp. Uh, depending on how late her guard duty went, Yzmir will be trying to get home pretty quick. Yeah, you, uh, your guard duty ended uh, not long after uh, after Tempest came. So you had you had another uh, couple of hours, and then it was uh, time for a shift change. Miri is gonna head over to Yzmir's place and knock on her door. The door swings open, and it's an orc. Uh, good morning. Where's Yzmir? Good morning. I believe she is waking up. Would you care to come in? I think I'd first like to meet you, good sir. My name is Miri, and you are? Tempest of the Jagged, or Jagged Tusk Orc Clan. It is lovely to meet you, but I do need to speak with Yzmir. Is she actually awake, or... If not, I believe she will be soon. Please I'm come coming. in. Hi, yes, ma'am. I need to get moving soon. I need to go out adventuring, and I was really hoping you'd come with me. Uh, sorry, I uh, had an overnight shift. Uh, what? 
where are you going? Why do you need me? What? I well, I I don't think I'd really be well prepared to go adventuring all by myself. I have been preparing to adventure for my whole life, but I really don't want to go out into the wide world all by myself. And I was hoping I could get you to come with me. There's been issues going on and I need to help. Uh, well, first of all, I got this guy. I want to make sure he gets to the Explorers Guild. He was looking for it last night. And I probably need to talk to my my commanders and make sure it's all right. You know, you know, I've got the army and the guard mm -hmm. to worry about, right? Right. Like, all right. Well, I'll let you get to that. Um, Tempest, would you like me to take you to the Explorers Guild? Absolutely. But first, may I offer the two of you breakfast? I've already eaten. He'll smile over at Izmir. Uh, sure. Sure, why not? Sorry, Miri. I do have to eat. <laughs> no, no, I quite understand. I, I'm sorry. Uh, shall I make some tea for you? Tea would be lovely, thank you. And with a great flourish, he will uh, pull the cat that he has been cooking off of the skewer over your little cook fire, and will uh, will start cutting pieces of meat off. You know... I might not be as hungry as I thought. You enjoy that. I'll go get some permission. Mary just sort of gives him an odd look and sets about making tea. He's going to be stuffing pieces of cat in his mouth and uh, on occasion asking, are you sure you don't want any? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Mary, you're going to show him where to go, right? So you two yep. have fun. Just make sure you lock the door when you leave. And yes, ma'am. She's actually gonna leave very quickly. <laughs> uh, I am afraid that consumption of cat is uh, forbidden by my religion. Oh, I'm very sorry. What religion is that? I serve Foltus, the Lord of Sunbeams. The Lord of Sunbeams. Well, that's the way I tend to think of him. You're not familiar with the human gods, are you? No. Are you interested in a lesson? Because I can teach you. But if it's not interesting, I can keep quiet. I would be very interested, thank you. All right, then Mary will launch into a discussion of how the different gods are. Basically an explanation of the whole pantheon. I don't really think I'm up for role-playing it because I don't know all the gods really well. That's totally fine. Um, while Mary is uh, going on and on, um, uh, how do you say it? Katiara? That's great. Okay, Katiara, uh, you hear a commotion coming from downstairs. Uh, you haven't had a lot of sleep at this point, um, but uh, there's definitely something uh, strange going on downstairs. And uh, Tali, you have also heard it. Oh, bloody hell. What is it on about? Oh, oh. I stumble off, get throw some cold water in my face from the basin, throw on some clothes, and go out nursing a low-grade hangover. What do I see as I go down the stairs? Uh, there's a man uh, who's been laid out on a table, and uh, you can see blood on the floor. Uh, and there's people surrounding him, and 
I'm trying trying to get through to him, and he's just he's just screaming. Okay. Um, I use give him five hit points of health. Okay. Um, so he he does settle down uh, after your uh, magical healing, um, but he still looks wild eyed and afraid. Um, Yerin, you hear uh, from your spot nearby as well as he talks about how uh, one of the farmers uh, near his place uh, stumbled into his farm uh, late in the night last night and attacked him and his family and uh, and he's he came to he came to the city for help uh, hoping that someone will aid him uh, and and help his family uh, have you talked to the gods at the gate uh, have you talked to the gods at the gates I mean are they doing anything it uh, I, I didn't come through the gate I came I came along the frozen river it was faster than, than going all the way around uh, to the east side. All right. Well, I think I think one of the first things that we need to do is actually uh, take care of that. Um, Oi, you over there! What it, could you nip out and get the guard? Bring them here so we he, they can get the story from him where they need to go. I could help. Well, that'd be bloody lovely. And who are you? I. Uh, Yurine Velvice. I'll go get the guard. Okay, so Yurine uh, runs out, and it's not long before uh, you get to the uh, city guard. And uh, yeah, you find you find uh, some people uh, milling about the building there. Uh, while this is going on, I'm examining the wound. Does it uh, any wounds on him? Does it look to be diseased, festering? You do see that uh, he has uh, what appear to be teeth marks still in his arm, um, and it's uh, kind of a, a di it's discolored still, even after your healing. Over at the guardhouse, it takes Yurine a couple of minutes to get up her courage to actually talk to somebody, and she will pick the um, least intimidating person to to approach. All right. Uh, so, so you approach um, Lieutenant Phileas, who's a, a little halfling a city guard. Excuse me. There's there's been somebody who's been attacked. Um, over at the Lock and Key Inn. Can, can you please come help? He was attacked by one of his farmers. I, I could, but uh, I, I was just about to be finished my shift. Um, oh, bother. Uh, I, I, I'm a little bit too tired for that. Uh, and you know, the, the old fights in the inns, it's not all that interesting. Um, maybe, uh, maybe if you just head down the, Oh yeah, yeah. I see. I see. You see that just down the road there. There's uh, there's uh, a Yzmir. She's she's just coming out of her house uh, down over there. Uh, I'm sure she'd be happy to help you. Oh, well, thank you. And she'll go follow up with Yzmir after hemming and hawing for a few minutes. Um, excuse me. That gentleman said you'd help. Somebody was attacked over at the Lock and Key Inn. I think he was bitten. So. Oh, oh, well, that just complicates my day. Uh, so sorry. Uh, no, not your fault. Uh, all right, uh, I'll come look. Uh, just, I guess, lead the way. So uh, Tempest, while Miri is going, continuing to go on and on about religion, you do notice that uh, Yzmir uh, has been approached by uh, an elf and is being led away. Can I get any sense as to what her demeanor was or uh, if something looked to be the matter? Oh, something always looks the matter with you, Irene. Well, she offered me hearth and home, which means that uh, it's, uh, it's ride or die at this point. So I'm just going to turn to Miri and say, uh, I beg your pardon, but my hostess appears to be in need of aid. 
but I would love to continue hearing about your pantheon of deities. Could we take this up another time, as I'm already walking for the door? Uh, Miri's gonna set aside the kettle and head out the door after. Wait, yes, ma'am? Is she all right? Did something happen? I don't know. And uh, I'm shouldering my halberd and just jogging down the street after her. Mary is also going to follow. Having left my pack at Izmir's home, so I have an excuse to come back later. Haha. -ha. So, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to try and hurry and catch up with Yzmir and find out what happened. So, do I notice y these two following us, or...? Yeah, they're not subtle about it at all. Okay, I'm trying uh, to catch up. I'm trying to hurry away. I've been in hurrying after Yireen. Did I say that right? Sorry? That's correct. Okay, I've been hurrying after her, but when I finally notice the two trying to catch up, Yzmir's just going to kind of slow like, oh my god. Uh, and Yireen just, or actually, I don't know if I know you. Uh, you, girl, just wait. Uh, and then she'll stop and turn back to the other two. And she's like, what? What is it? We've got your back. It looks like you might need our aid. What happened? I don't know what... This girl, sorry, what's your name? Irene? Irene just came to get me because apparently someone was attacked, so I have to go deal with that before I deal with your guys' things. Miri, why don't you show Tempest, the Explorer's Guild, and I will come find you later. All right, should I send Mother there? That probably wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, I'll just swing by the temple real quick and send her to the lock and key, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I, I will go run quick and get Mother. Tempest, wait here, I'll be right back. I will do no such thing. My hostess has need of aid and I will be going with her. No, All right. I, do I don't know if I need aid. <laughs> well, it won't hurt to have another person that can help. So I'll go run and get Mother and meet you at the lock and key. Be right back. And she takes off. The small one speaks sense. Let us away. Fine. Yareen, let's, let's go. Let's go. Okay, without a word, she starts heading for the inn again. All right, so everybody runs across town. Um, the uh, Temple to Foltus is uh, basically right across the street from uh, the Lock and Key Inn, uh, so it's not a very uh, far trek to go once Miri gets her mother, uh, Carrie, who is uh, one of one of the better known healers in the in the city. Um, <clears throat> and you all uh, meet up in the inn, and by the time everybody gets there and all sorted out. Uh, the man who was attacked is uh, sitting up in a chair and having a, a pint uh, to settle his nerves a bit, um, but he still looks uh, distraught. Do the wounds on his uh, arm still look festery? Yeah, they definitely don't look like they've healed completely. Okay, and uh, once they get there, Yzmir is just going to kind of give... Tempest, uh, just just wait a minute, gesture, and then she's gonna go over to the clearly injured party, and she's gonna be like, "I was told someone was attacked. Uh, can anyone tell me what's going on?" Tempest either ignores or misinterprets that gesture. We'll never know, and he's sticking right behind her. Oh, finally, someone from the. City guard. My, my name's Jordan. I, I, I've come from the farms. Uh, my farm is, is, is close to the, to the walls. Uh, one of my neighbors came in and attacked me last night. He was, he was absolutely wild. And, and uh, I, I managed to, to fight him off. Uh, but uh, I, I came to town as fast as I could up the river. And uh, I 
near froze to death on the way here. I, I, need, I need aid for, for my family. I need to make sure everybody's okay. Okay, if Carrie is in here by this point, she's probably hurried over to assist the man with his wounds. Yeah, the wounds appear to have been uh, mostly healed um, at this point, uh, but that you do still see uh, the outline of uh, teeth marks on his arm, and they're uh, they're discolored. You'll appreciate. I, I I hope you'll forgive me for speaking up, but that looks dang strange to me. Did your neighbor bite you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't understand what he was doing. I, like I said, he just charged into my house and started uh, flailing at me and, and biting and, and he attacked my wife and then, and then I, I managed to get him out and uh, I, I, think I, I, I think I killed him. This sounds like something that should perhaps be investigated a little bit more closely. Yours is which house? The third one over? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm not far from the wall. All right, well, I guess I'm here. Uh, can someone let Captain Luke know that I am going to investigate this? Like, f he's for the King's Army. He's the one I'm supposed to answer to in a few hours, so let him know. <laughs> the inke innkeeper offers to uh, pass on the word. Uh, he'll send a stable boy running. All right, Miri is interested in heading out to have a look at this because this looks like it might be undead activity. Would it be too much trouble if I came along? Oh, you're welcome to come along if you'd like. Uh, I'd really like to have someone at my back just in case there's something more seriously wrong. Let me nip across and get my mace. I, I could help. Anyone who wishes to is welcome to come along. Make sure you've got your armor and your oh, weapons. I, that. I I would say this is more official business, but I get the impression that no one's gonna listen to me. Well, dear, we're all concerned. And what better way to help the city than to help the guard? And of course we will listen to you. You are leading us, after all. <sighs> God. Fine, fine. So, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming, and you're coming, I'm assuming. Okay, that's fine. We'll go take a look. Uh, Tempest will pump his chest once or twice and say, lead us, war leader. I give a sweeping bow and gesture towards the door. Lead on, lead on. Miri has already darted out across the street to go get her stuff. Yzmir will just lead the others outside and wait for Miri because she knows Miri's coming. <laughs> yep, Miri is back very quickly. Yep, so you all get together and... Uh... Which way are you making your way out of town? Are you going to uh, follow the river like Jordan did on his way in, or are you going to take the gate to the east? I would suggest we take the river. Uh, the river would be faster, but if we need to alert the guard, we should probably go the other way, except that's... Well, the stable boy is going to do that. Yeah, let's just take the river. The east gate is closer to the farmlands where he would be from, correct? No, uh, down the river would be the quicker way to his house. Okay. Also, yeah. also, uh, he may have dropped some things that could indicate more about what we're facing. I rather doubt that, but okay. Tempest will take the lead and start breaking trail, clearing the snow so that it's easier for others to walk. <laughs> All right, uh, so you guys make your way um, down along the river. Uh, the wall isn't, uh, doesn't span the river at all, um, but it's frozen over at this time of year, so it's no problem for you guys to get around. Um, and you uh, 
uh, can make a survival check to see if you can uh, find his footprints to lead to, to his house. Also, uh, to help Tempest, I was playing my uh, loot and giving him the plus 10 movement to let him break ground easier. Sounds good. Beg pardon, did you call for a survival check? Yes, for tracking. Nope. <laughs> good thing you brought along some help. Very good. <laughs> you guys will have noticed that Irene is looking substantially happier the further away you guys get from populated space. She likes the river a lot better. The trail that uh, Yireen finds uh, departs from the river and heads uh, more towards the east. <clears throat> and uh, you do find that it's uh, heading straight for uh, one of the farmhouses. Irene is scampering up the trail. She's finding, beckoning back to people. You're good at this, aren't you? Yzmir kind of calls that after her. I like it out here. Ah, that's all right. It's handy. Rather lacking in creature comforts, though. Some creatures are more comforted by different things. Just keep an eye out, everyone. You approach the farmhouse, and uh, you can see that uh, there was a lot of activity outside the front door uh, before Jordan left the area. Um, there's blood in the snow uh, that you can see, even though it's been uh, partially covered by the, the remnants of the blizzard last night. I am going to cast Detect Good and Evil. Uh, that gets blocked by cover when it's uh, a monster or something, right? Give me a sec to check that. Hey, Ryan. Uh, is there yeah. a large spot that would show where the body fell? And is there a body? There is a, a large area here where it looks like there was probably some kind of uh, battle, but you don't see a body anywhere. Okay, the spell can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a, sheet, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. You do detect evil inside the house. So clearly something has gone seriously wrong. Well, I would say so, since he said he killed the man, and the man's not here. Undead. Well, keep an eye out. I said keep an eye out, everyone. Um, let's uh, take a look at this door. Has Miri clued us in that, that she's detecting evil inside the house? Uh, yes. Or at least that's... Yeah, she'll, she'll clue you in now. There's something evil inside there. Uh, I'm suspecting undead activity. Okay, preemptively, I'm casting Bardic Inspiration on Jesse and also on Yzmir. Thank you much. And it's D6. D6. <clears throat> okay, uh, Tempest is going to look to... Uh to Izmir, and he's going to ask permission to engage war leader. I don't know yet. We don't know what's in there. We know it's evil. Isn't that enough? Uh, he said his wife was in there, didn't he? He did. Yeah, so she said that, and then she's like, I want to make sure we're not putting someone in danger by barging in. Uh, can she check the door and just see if she can open it? <laughs> you can. And when you open it, you do hear uh, sounds inside, and they're coming closer to the door when you opened it. Okay. Uh, what Izmir will do then is actually kick the door open and dodge back just in case so they can get a view. Okay. Uh, you kick the door open, 
and uh, as you dodge back, uh, several people come charging out of the building. Uh, a, a full-grown woman and uh, three younger uh, younger people uh, appear to be teenagers or uh, children, and they are growling and have their hands reaching out for the nearest person, uh, and are yeah, they look crazy. Do I detect evil coming from them? Oh, yes. Okay, then I'm going to declare to everybody that these people are lost and we need to put them out of their misery. Permission to engage. Initiative, please. Damn, Mary. Apparently I've wasted a 20. A 20 is never wasted. Never. Indeed, never. Initiative isn't usually the most useful place to put to blow a twenty, though. Oh, I, know, I beg I, to disagree. I just wasted one too, so possibly. This is taking the thoughtful approach on this combat. Yareen, what class are you again? Ranger. Uh, Ryan, I was just going to ask. Uh, we're seeing they're crazy and basically rabbit. Is there any impression we? can get initially that tells us their past saving like it's no good going easy on them like uh what whatever it is non-harmful um if you want you can give me an insight check for your action for the action yes uh for that'll be your action it is your turn first so you can uh gauge the situation um, would I able, be able to do that and cast a spell? I don't know if that affects my bonus or anything like that. I think a skill check takes a full action if you're going to use it. So if you have a spell that's like a bonus action, you could do that as well as uh, your insight check. Yeah, sure. I'll do an insight first. Um, or there's two ways I want to do this. Either I want to cast armor of... Agathis on myself first, or can I do an inside check and do my uh, hex warrior? Just get my grab my sword and basically make it my hex blade for the moment. Sure. Okay, then I'll do the inside check. Mary has already decided that these creatures are past saving. You look upon these uh, simple farmers who are charging out at you and their, their eyes, uh, uh, dis despite them growling and reaching for you and attacking, their eyes appear quite vacant as though there's nothing uh, human left inside them. And I can't, I, would I be more likely to attribute this to they're completely undead? It's like, there's nothing, no saving. Hmm. Or whatever I'm not they sure are. what, uh, I'm not sure what background Yzmir has had with uh, the undead. How about she give me an arcana check? Uh, yeah, you know uh, that if if these have turned into undead monsters, there's uh, there's no saving them at this point. Okay, so yeah, she'll kind of just yell a a confirmed yeah take him out and she's gonna draw her short sword and while she does that she uh, casts Hex Warrior on it and it's her Hex Blade for the time being. Okay, Miri, you're up next. I am currently trying to decide whether I want to cast Sacred Flame or shoot them or smash them. How far away are they? They're right up and in your faces. Then I'm going to take a swing at one with my mace. Okay, you take a swing at uh, the one that's coming right at you and you miss. So next up is uh, Yireen. If everybody seems to be fighting, she'll draw her short swords and attack there. So main hand first. Okay. That is a hit. It's her offhand. Okay, so you stab uh, this zombie that's coming at you a couple of times, and uh, black 
ichor comes oozing out of the wounds, but it continues on uh, to attack, not slowed down in the slightest. Uh, Kachara, it's your turn. Right then. Uh, I've got my long sword in my hand, and I think I need to ventilate one of these creatures. Uh, is there one at me, or am I unoccupied and I can target uh, one that's already taken damage? We'll say that uh, you were in the back because you were playing your loot for uh, Tempest, uh, so you can target whichever one you like. There's four. There's four of them, and uh, each of your uh, companions is currently engaged. Okay, so I can't do a two-hand attack because I'd be going for the dagger now. As is grabbing a weapon a bonus action or an action? Uh, drawing a weapon, I'm not even sure if it's a bonus action. I, I think that's just something you can do. All right. In that case, I whip out and let my loot fall to my side. I take uh, the long sword and the dagger. I do the first attack on the one that uh, I believe it was Yaz uh, Yarin uh, ventilated. Okay. That's a miss. No, I, I, I hit uh, enter instead of uh, doing the full thing. I also have plus three, but that'll... We'll say that the plus three still makes it a five. That's the rule. So I go to my offhand. Go to my offhand, which is the dagger. That's a hit. Um, okay. Uh, and so that's 1d4 plus 1. Yeah, for an offhand weapon, you don't add uh, any additional damage to it from your attribute modifier. So it would just be the uh, die 4 by itself for 3 damage. Okay. And now it's their turn. Okay. Uh, Tempest, I assume a 9 misses you. It does. Miri, I believe a 12 misses you. Yeah, I have an 18. Yzmir, does a 16 hit you? It does. And Yeren, uh, does a 15 hit you? It does. Yzmir, you take three damage. All right. And Yeren, you take seven. Uh, can both of you also make constitution saving throws, please? Oh, God. You're not good at this. You're uh, both just feeling the pain of the attacks for now. Um, and uh, Tempest is going to finish off the round. Having fended off my zombie attacker by just pushing it back with my halberd, I'm going to take a small breath, hold it, and let out a mighty roar as I go into a rage. I am going to then try and bring my halberd down on this beast. That's a hit. And is that plus five, including the two for rage? It, it is, yes. My strength modifier is only three, and I don't think fifth edition has the same... Uh, strength and a half modifier that two-handed wielding did in previous editions. No. Then that's the total. All right, back to the top with Yzmir. She's going to yell, ow, and Eldritch blasts the one in front of her in the face. She was a little mad. <laughs> so it looks. I'd be a little mad, too, if a zombie tried to bite me. So this, like, frosty, lightning-like burst, th bolt bursts from her hand and gets that thing right in the face. And it shrugs it off. Miri, you're up. Uh, I'm going to use Sacred Flame. Wait, what do I roll to cast Sacred Flame? The uh, zombie has to roll a dex save. You just roll a d8 for damage. So I don't even have to roll to hit? They have to dodge. Okay. Dodge? That's what zombies are best at. Uh -huh. I don't think that cuts it. Uh, what's the DC that he uh, needs to roll against? Uh, my spell save DC is 13. 
Uh, do I add spell attack bonus to anything? Not with Sacred Flame. Okay, then eight is the damage. Next up is Yareen. She let out a piercing scream when she was hit. But she's going to be fighting for her life now. That's a hit. She'll attack with her offhand as well. If it is it still standing after that, I'm assuming. It is, but it's looking like it's in really rough shape. That might not help. I think I've missed. Um, you forgot your attack bonus on that, so that would actually hit. I don't get it on my offhand. No, for the attack you do, oh, for the damage attack. you don't. Okay, so that would hit. Perfect. Yep. A uh, little bit helps. Oh, you think you should have put it down, but it keeps on trucking. Did it go down and come back up? No, she, she struck it really hard, and it kind of stumbled a little bit, but then it looked like it gathered up its uh, forces and kept on coming. Katiara, it's your turn. If I go after the one that just stumbled, is there, if I try to lay an AoE spell with five feet uh, effect, is there another one around there? Could I target two of them? Yeah, the, the, yeah they're all kind of clustered together, so that's no problem. Okay, uh, how many, uh, what's the max that I can uh, do, two or three? Four? Uh, you, can, you can get three of them. Okay, I'm going to do that and make sure the one on your ring is in it as well, and I am going to cast Thunderclap. That's a cantrip, a uh, five-foot area of effect. They need to save con 13. Was that for the group or for each one? Okay, it's each one. Okay, so one of them saves. Uh, so one of them saved, the other two take uh, full effect. Do you want me to roll each uh, D6 separate, or do you want me to just do one roll for the two? Uh, you can just do one roll for everybody. Bloody. What kind of damage does that do? Uh, thunder damage. Okay. My sacred flame, by the way, is radiant. Yes. Uh, is it saved for half on the thunder? No. Uh, it's uh, succeed on con or take 1d6. Okay, sounds good. Oh, you get the zombie down that's in front of Yareen. One down, three to go. So it is the revive. I call out in an excited voice. you got to be careful with the undead. These, There's a 50-50 a chance that they'll get back up if you give them a killing blow. Tempest is missed. Um, Miri, you said a 16 misses? Yes, my AC is 18. Okay, and uh, Yuzmir does a 13 hit. Uh, it matches, so are we going with yes? Yep. So you take two points of damage. All right. Just over half. And now it's Tempest's turn. Uh, again, dodging the zombie, Tempest is going to bring the halberd down. I'm also going to use that inspiration die that I was given for my attack roll. That's a hit. Your zombie is also in really rough shape now. Back to the top of the order with Yzmir. Um, She is going to cast Booming Blade, a cantrip. Um, basically as part of an action, used to cast the spell, she'll make a melee attack against a creature within range. Um, when she hits, the target suffers normal attack effects, but if it moves willingly before the, her neck, the end of her next turn, it takes 1d8 thunder damage. Does moving count as attacking? It doesn't clarify. Okay. And she'll use that inspiration dice, too. I think she hits. Wow. And how? That's a nat 20. Sure is. 
So does that deal extra damage for being a crit? Yes, a critical hit always doubles the uh, damage dice. So 14 damage? Well done. Or is that easier? Or uh, You can roll a second die if you want. So nine damage. And so now the zombie, if it's not dead, is sheathed in booming energy. And if it willingly moves next turn, it takes an extra 1d8 thunder damage. OK. Next up is Miri. All right, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to Sacred Flame, that same one I've been attacking. Then I'm going to Healing Word, um, Gizmir. So that's the Sacred Flame. If and that's Radiant Damage, save. too. I that's Radiant think. Damage. But it's saved, so does it take any damage? Nope. Okay, so what were you doing on top of the uh, Sacred Flame? Healing Word on Gizmir. Thanks, Miri. You're quite welcome. Uh, let's keep getting these down and then go home. Okay, next up is Yerine. She'll attack again. Um, what one is standing nearest to her? Uh, the one that has been attacking Yzmir is closest. Attack is on that one. Got a hit? Yep. If it's still standing, she'll attack with her offhand on it. One second, I'll let you know. Uh, it goes down. Is there one within reach to attack with her second attack or no? Uh, you can uh, move forward and uh, attack the one that uh, Miri is on. Okay. She'll do that. Nope, that's a miss. Uh, Kachara, your turn. Yarin, you still hurt? A bit. All right. I reach forward and touch her to give her a cure wound that burns my two slots. There you go. Thank you. And has anybody used uh, their bardic inspiration yet? I don't think they have. I did on that nat 20. <laughs> I used mine as well. Okay, well, for my bonus action, um, the only pr uh, who is still actually engaged with a critter? I am. Okay, I'm going to throw uh, my last bardic inspiration on you, Tempest. Thank you. Yeah, I think Yurin took care of the one in front of Yzmir. Jesse's just been uh, avoiding damage like crazy over there. Um, and the one on uh, Miri misses as well. I swear I'm not trying to avoid them. Uh, but it is your turn now. I'm starting to feel a little embarrassed that mine is still standing, so you know how this goes. <laughs> wow. Moo-ha-ha. -ha. You do know you don't have to use your bardic inspiration until after the initial roll. I didn't, so thank you. Um, I'll keep that posted for the future. Okay, so max damage. I'm going to, uh, so with the crit, I believe that doubles to a 30. And because I'm a half orc, I also get brutal critical. So I'm going to add one additional uh, weapon die to the doubled score. So. Do you get modifiers on the second you, dice? No, you don't. So just roll two more uh, d10. I think you squished it. I'm going to be very embarrassed if this gets back up. <clears throat> on the plus side, um, it doesn't get back up if it's killed with a critical hit. Uh, so not only do you smash in the head of the one in front of you, your halberd uh, reaches all the way across and takes out the one that Miri's been fighting as well. They both go down. Nice! Yay, we got it! Well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> no, neither was I. We should probably look into tracking down where that started. Actually, I'm curious. Now, he said he killed the farmer, but did it revive after he left? 
and then go in there? In which case, is he one of these zombies? Because I thought you said it was a female in three teens. That is what I said. The Tempest neighbor. Heading... Sorry, go ahead. The problem. The neighbor. He said his. Jordan said it was his neighbor who bit him. I'm a little worried about Jor B Jordan being left at the inn now. Especially, I, I, especially if his family was turned after. Then I thought we go speak with Jordan, find out which of his neighbors, and make sure that he's all right. I'm worried about the zombie that went in after being, qu air quotes, you see I'm doing, dead, and then killed them, and now it's wandered off. It's taken down other households, possibly. Yes, but what direction it came from will be fastest determined by asking Jordan which of his neighbors it was. Uh, Irene, you see uh, two sets of tracks, uh, one from heading south and one heading east. But uh, based on the snow cover, you can't tell uh, which is coming and which is going. Thanks. I uh, don't vote we split the party. Mm. Well, no, that, that would not be a good idea. Here, or came here, or both. I'd rather find the source out here first. If uh, Jordan is an issue, at least there's guards in the city. But how many other may he infect? How many others are, is a wandering one going to affect out here? There are probably at least as many people out here as there are in the city. And I know there are people in the city who can fight. And the temple is right across the street. Yismer has a point. Let's go find the one that wandered in here to begin with. Hi. Yareen, any luck over there? Well, something came or left or both. Um, east and... And did you say south? Yes. There's tracks in both directions. I can't tell which direction they were traveling in. Is there any way to tell from the marks uh, how old they are or whether or not it looks like a... Okay, you say we can't tell which way it heads, but can we tell what type of boot went in? Uh, it looks similar both ways. Okay, I guess we check the neighborhood. Um, Tampus, see anything in there? Is there anything of interest in the house? Uh, it's a farmhouse, so uh, pretty standard fare in there. Um, is there anything in particular that you're looking for? Signs of struggle. Um, anything that might be out of the ordinary. Um, Tempest is not much of a civilized person, so the entire notion of a home is a little bit of a foreign one to him. He's not sure what he's looking for. He just, these things came out of here, so he's checking out their lair. Um, so you do see signs of a struggle for sure. There's uh, broken chairs um, and uh, the furniture is knocked askew. You do find like a, a cold meal has been uh, mostly spilled on the floor. Eating it. Of course you are. Um, but otherwise, like you, you check around and uh, there's uh, a couple of rooms, uh, one with several bunk beds, um, and uh, like some simple toys for the kids, uh, some farming equipment, that type of stuff. Okay, outside, uh, Katira spits in his hand, strikes it with his hand, and sees which way most of the spit flies, whether it's south or east. That sounds like a random dice roll. Uh, high is south, uh, low is east. And what did uh, Tempest have an answer Ouch. for Yzmir? Uh Tempest will just report what's in the house, and we'll... Uh suggest that we move the bodies inside so that they're not left out. Okay, so you said high was east? 
Uh, I think I said high is south. All right. I take a look and I say, I say we go south. There's an awful lot of world to the south. That's not, well, yes, obviously let's go find the nearest house and see what's in it. I meant the south tracks. Let's go see if there's a house to the south that his neighbor could have come from. Yes. If not, we can check other, see if there's more tracks or look for other houses. Otherwise, we're coming back and we might be worth going into town first and then coming back out here. Mary is going to say a prayer over the dead bodies to make sure that they are consecrated and can't wake back up as more zombies. Okay, now, just to be stupid and cautious, we did not come from the south here, did we? No, you came from the north. Once again, I bow, flourish, and wave my hand, asking someone to lead us to the south. I also think Tempest had a good idea. Let's drag these into the house first, in case we have to inspect more later. I've already done so. We're good to go. Oh, well then. Probably follow the trail. Let's follow the trail. All right. Um, you guys head south following the trail. And uh, you do see a farm, another farmhouse off in the distance. And the trail uh, does lead you directly there. And yeah, the door is closed. Do I see uh, smoke coming from the fireplace? Uh, there's no smoke coming from the chimney. Any uh, signs of a struggle in the snow like there was at Jordan's house? Um, no, but there are more tracks. Can I tell anything about them, such as how many there might have been? or Make a survival check. A sinking feeling comes into Irene's stomach as she sees tracks coming from the south, and also more going to the east and the west and the north, uh, which are the tracks that you followed. She shares that with the rest of the group. Oh, dear. If I may be so bold, I think what we need to do is get back to the city and mobilize the guard, as well as making sure that Jordan hasn't turned. Uh, I... I'd like to check this house, but then, yes, that might be our best bet. We might have to send people to the neighborhood, the neighbors. Uh, can I go knock on the door and see if I hear anything? If I may, would you allow me to lead the charge, war leader? <sighs> sure. Yes. <laughs> and I will walk up to the door and knock on it. There is no response. Pushing my way in. Are there any windows? Inside you find... Sorry, did you want to say something, uh, Kachira? I was just wondering if there was any windows that uh, we could look at. No. Uh, so Tempest pushes his way in, and uh, there are signs of a struggle inside, um, but there's no uh, bodies alive or dead. Has they all left? I'll uh, communicate that to the party and agree with our ranger's assessment and uh, suggest that if we, we might want to split the party and start trying to track these down so that we can highlight other spots of danger um, because Tempest is foolhardy and splitting the party seems like a good idea to him. I immediately, no, splitting the party just makes it easier for us all to die and nobody be informed. We need to take a group, get back to the city, for, uh, mobilize the guard, and make sure Jordan hasn't turned inside and he's making the city full of uh, these freaking undead. That seems a wise idea. We can go, if we go to the city, we can mobilize both the guard and the temples. 
and the combination of soldiers and clerics will be more useful against these things than merely the soldiers by themselves. I will accept your arguments and lead and follow where you lead. I nod my head to Miri, uh, and you can tell I'm visibly impressed by her making the connection with the clerics and the uh, guard. Okay, so is the the group uh, decision to go back? I think majority is ruling go back, check on Jordan, alert the guard and and the temple, and then we'll go from there. Okay, uh, so you guys head back up to town and uh, go along the river route again, I assume, since that's the fastest way to uh, the Lock and Key Inn. Uh, when you get there, you find uh, that uh, Jordan has been killed, um, and uh, the innkeeper is nursing an injury of his own now. You've been bitten. That's just a scratch. Did it come from Jordan? Uh, yes, uh, of course it did. Miri, can you yep. cure an illness? Um, if I can't, mother can. Uh, get yeah, get her a, a cleric in here. Uh, I think th whatever Jordan had spreads. Injuries are a problem. Yeah, that's how it spreads. I don't think I have anything that actually cures infection. You probably don't have lesser restoration yet, hey? No, not at first level. So I am going to run across to the temple and summon a healer and let them know what's going on. I'm keeping an eye on the innkeeper with my halberd at hand. I'm not being very subtle about it either, just kind of standing there staring at him without blinking. I slowly move behind the innkeeper, and I'm like, you're a good man. And I ready my dagger behind my back. Was there anyone else in the fight? And did anyone else get hurt? Uh, my wife, uh, Innes, uh, left for the, the temple to go get help. I, I think she was she was also hurt. Um, also, Yzmir and Yerin, can you please make another constitution saving throw for me? Uh, Yzmir, you're noticing uh, where one of the zombies got you is uh, discolored. <sighs> make sure some healers get here fast. Mary has already left to go get the healers. How long is it going to take her to gather up a couple healers? Not long. Like I said, the uh, Temple to Foltis is just across the street. Uh, so you find your mother very quickly. All right. Then I am going to send mom over to the inn and continue explaining what we've just experienced to the rest of the people in the temple. There's a problem with that, love. My magic hasn't been working. I know. I'm going to go through to the other temples and see if anybody can help. I'll, I'll do my best. And she leaves for uh, the inn. Um, when I notice the problem on my arm, uh, Yurin, you were the only other one hurt in that fight, right? I think so. But I'm shying away from Katira and Tempest because they're looking pretty scary at the moment about people who've been in injured. Well, keep an eye on your bite. Do you suspect your healers will be able to aid you with this? Well, I'm hoping they can purge whatever it is. Otherwise, we're in some deep... If you wish... We could take your hand off. I like my hand. I'd like to try and keep it. Ryan, uh, if I use lore or history or whatever, 
Would I know of any potions, medicinal ingredients that could uh, stave off or cure a, the spread of undead? I'd say give me an arcana check. You have no idea. All right, so Mary is sending over all the healers she can gather from the Temple of Foltus and then running off to the other temples. She knows what's been going on, so she will deliberately go to somewhere there might be healers that hasn't been having as much of the trouble. Okay, um, so you could head to the Temple of Torm. That sounds good. I will do that, and I will explain to them exactly what we've found and that they really need to mobilize all their healers immediately. Okay, uh, so that's, it's, it'll take you a little bit to get there, but uh, in the meantime, your mother has arrived at the lock and key with uh, the other healers from Foltus, um, and unfortunately, they have no power at all to help. And length of time the infection has happened doesn't give any difference. It's like one second after being scratched, you're boned. Uh, it doesn't appear that way because Yerin, uh, Yerin's wound isn't showing any signs of uh, discoloration. And it took oh, this, sorry. and it took this long for Yizmir to notice. Okay, basically, what I'm saying is, once it has gone necrotic, evil, whatever, that's it. There's no way to reverse it. Not that you're aware of. What would you want from Mary for her to see if there's anything she might know? Uh, would, uh, that would be either a religion check or an arcana check for you. I'm going to take religion because I have bonuses to that. Not to mention uh, advantage. Yes, that too. That's part of the bonuses. Not that the advantage helped me, but does a 15 tell me anything? You think that uh, if you can get a lesser restoration spell cast on somebody before they turn, uh, it should undo the damage. Okay, so I'm going to run straight for the Temple of Torm and inform them that I need somebody with lesser restoration. And as far as I know, the rest of us are kind of stuck waiting. How is the innkeeper looking? Uh, the innkeeper isn't looking so great. Of course, that could be because he's got a half-orc in front of him with a halberd pointed at his face. It's not pointed at his face. It's just at the ready. Okay. All right, so how long does it take me to come back with a cleric from Torm? Um, it's going to take you about 20 minutes. Okay. That's, if that's how long it's going to take, it's, that's how long it's going to take, but I'm definitely going to rush them. I am really, really getting torn whether or not I want to try and off the innkeeper before he turns. He begs you not to. He, he, thinks, he thinks they'll get back in time to help him. You've been good to me, and I don't want to see th that happen to you. Jesmir's just pacing, looking annoyed. <laughs> Eastmer is also starting to notice that she's uh, sweating a bit more than usual. Yeah, hence the pacing. She's not happy right now. And which temple did your wife go to? Well, she she went across the street to, to the, the Temple of Foltus. And uh, Miri's mother, uh, Kira, says, yes, she, she came to us and I, I couldn't help. So I, I sent her on to the... Uh, the Temple of Torm. I'm a little concerned. Uh, good innkeeper, would you mind terribly if we tied you up, left you on the floor, so if you did turn, you can't do any more damage, lock the inn behind us, and we take off to make sure your wife be well? I'm going to smile and say, you would love to, wouldn't you? Can I try to intimidate him? Yes, you can. Not bad. He meekly agrees to your plan. I'll use my... Oh, 
I don't have my explorer's pack with me, so I have no rope. Um, is there something in the inn for us to secure him with? Don't don't worry about it. I nip up the stairs, get my stuff, come down, tie him up, uh, and unfortunately, due to my checkered pass, it looks like a really involved double choke bondage hold. <laughs> That's perfect. Tempest watches it very interestedly. You don't want to know. Kinky. So I'm furiously blushing. Yeah, even Yzmir stops her pace, pacing to be like, huh. Uh, so is are we leaving people to watch him while we go? go or what? I don't think I should make judgments right now. Uh, well, the clerics are here, right? Yep. Clerics, you're all right watching over the man, and you can alert the guard or somebody else if he actually does turn, right? Uh, yeah, yes, of, cor of course you could, uh, and we'll continue to pray that our, our powers to, to heal will return. And my prayers are answered with yours. Bless you. All right, let's go. So if y'all are headed out towards the Temple of Torm, you're probably going to meet Miri about halfway. Is everybody a uh, 30 foot speed? Yep. Yep. Crap. Miri is encumbered, so her speed is reduced to 20. So we okay, get closer that, to that, you. Yeah. So we catch up to you. Once we catch up to you, I whip out my lute and I start you playing my long strider song. You come up to 30. Does it impact more than one person? It's only good for one. Uh, that was the ruling. Uh, otherwise, it'd have to be uh, an item that I couldn't have at this level. Trail behind. Okay, when they, ca when they catch up, Yzmir's going to say... We need two healings here, and then someone has to get to the uh, lock and key. Well, yes, I was going to fetch someone whose powers are actually working. Well, aren't you on the way back? Don't you have people with you? You're almost you're you're almost at the the uh, temple of Torm by the time they catch up to you. You haven't gotten there quite yet. Yeah, that was pretty much what I thought. All right, so just for uh, flavor, the tune I'm playing as an instrumental is Rambling Man. Nice. <laughs> Love it. And do we see the innkeeper's wife anywhere? Um, just uh, as, as you get closer to uh, the Temple of Torm, you do see uh, her kind of uh, stumbling her way towards the entrance of the temple. So we've caught her en route. It would appear so. All right. My question is, do we see any uh, activated wounds? I think her stumbling is a well, sign. No, 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 no. I mean, stumbling could be tired, fatigue. She could have had blood loss. I want to know if we see any wounds that look like she's on the path to turning. Uh, she is holding her uh, shoulder. All right. Since Yzmir ha has her arms a uh, bit too, she runs up to the woman and is like, I'm here for the same thing. Let's go. <laughs> Yzmir, please make another constitution saving throw. Much better. <laughs> yep. You don't turn at the gates of the Torm Temple, so that's good. Um, she's very grateful that you're there to help her, and uh, you guys enter the temple. And once we're in, uh, Yzmir's just going to be shouting, like, we need healing here and at the lock and key. We need people who can cure undead. Mary's going to run in, knows where the healers are, uh, knock on the, their door and ask specifically for lesser restoration. Okay. Um, some of the uh, clerics uh, attend to you, and, uh, and the, the high priest of Torm 
uh, speaks for the group and says, Yes, my children, uh, what seems to be the issue here? The issue is we need some frickin' healing damn fast or we're going to be swarmed up to our armpits and undead. Sir, there has been an outbreak of zombies outside the city. We believe we may have traced it roughly to its source out in the farmlands, and we're going to need a lot of help, and I'm sure you're well aware that the sun is not responding. Two of us right here have been bit by zombies, and we could really use some help. As I said. Three of us. The high priest uh, waves for uh, two of his uh, followers to go and administer uh, to you, and uh, they cast their lesser restorations, and the uh, discoloration uh, disappears completely at their touch. And that gets Yzmir, the innkeeper's wife, and I'm sorry, I keep stumbling over your <laughs> character's name, Tally. Yareen? Yareen. <laughs> Yareen. 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 Yareen hasn't shown any signs of uh, of any disease whatsoever. All right. Now, Joran, the innkeeper at uh, the Lock and Key, he's infected. He needs a lesser restoration whammy bammy as well. Mary's going to continue explaining what they've found to the high priest. Okay, the high priest orders uh, one of his uh, lesser priests to go uh, to the inn and uh, administer healing to the innkeeper. And once she's healed, Izmir will join Mary and the high priest and just mention there were more outside the walls traveling. We don't know in every which way from where we found the first ones. Uh, we might be in for an outbreak. It's a plague of the undead. Yes, I understand. I shall send my faithful on a crusade against whatever undead lurk outside the city, and we shall deal with them as quickly as possible. I thank you, sir. With all respect, take the guard with you. Very well, I shall uh, speak with the city guard and uh, perhaps the army as well and see if we can gain any aid in this cause. Thank you. I appreciate you listening. Torm is a god of self-sacrifice and courage. Of course, we will help the people of this city in any way we can. Well, thank you. I look for one of the like candle burning or whatever they use for offertories, and I toss a gold coin in. The high priest smiles appreciatively. Your heart's in the right place. I got to appreciate that. New, right. what do we do? Well, I feel like I should go talk to my captain and let him know what's happening. And then I think it's time we go hunting. I Yes, the uh, hunt sounds to be in order. My question is, do we nip back and see if Jordan is okay or if they need some help down there? Well, it can't hurt. Uh, Ryan, how far is the captain, her captain, from uh, the inn? Either Captain L Luke or Chief Bran, since they're the two she probably answers to the most. Uh, Chief Bran is the closest. Um, it's on the same street that you're on, uh, just a, a short walk away. Um, the army barracks is uh, more towards the north side of town, uh, across the market. All right, uh, we'll go. We'll go talk to my my chief on the way to go check on Jordan. That's good sense, lass. If you want to go ahead, I can stop in there and let him know what's going on as well. 
I don't think uh, with potential more undead room in the city, we need to be splitting up. We've got you well, healthy. We're not going very like you to stay far. That way. I need to nip. Last words. I need to nip back into the temple and make sure I've got everything I need to get going. Uh, Tempest, you should probably go fetch your pack. We'll have to wait on Tempest's response because he's uh, AFK for a minute. I am rolling my eyes. People, we've just gotten healthy. We're all together. It's not that far to nip to hers. Stop quickly at the across the street temple and then go and check on Jordan. I don't I think it's a good idea to split us up. I also need to get my stuff from my house. All right, so we'll pop off to Yasmir's, then hit the temple on the way over to Jordan. My place is a lit not on the same drag, so I'd rather go talk to the chief first because I don't know what they want me to do. <laughs> but the chief is on this street, right? It's the captain that's far away. Yes, and she answers to both. So if she talks to the chief, which is on the way, which is what she w said she was going to do, and then catch up to you guys at the end, it's all on the same road. Rains is further north in the city, um, and she'd prefer to go alone. Oy vey. Let's just figure out what we're doing. Like, do our things on this street, and then if anyone needs to grab their stuff, they can grab it after. That seems reasonable. I guess uh, Yizmir will lead the way to where Chief Bran is. Okay. Uh, yeah, you get to the uh, city guard building. No problem. It's nice and close. And uh, Chief Bran is in there. So Yizmir walks in, uh, tracks him down if she can. Uh, yeah. Chief Bran, uh, I don't know if you've heard yet, but we have a zombie issue outside the city, and it's possibly slipping into the walls now. Oh, uh, wait, what? There's zombies in the city and out of the city? What? What are you talking about? A farmer came in earlier today. He was attacked by a neighbor, and the farmer who was covered in bite marks. So I was available, and I went to investigate with some people, and we found out his family was turned into zombies. And there's no signs of the neighbor who started the problem, and it looks like a few others have shambled off in different directions. And then the farmer who had come into the city attacked an innkeeper and his wife, and we just managed to deal with that. Oh, oh, that's a lot of stuff you're telling me all at once here, first thing in the morning. Uh, could you, could you maybe, could you maybe take this to uh, to Captain Jennifer? I, I'm not sure uh, zombies. That's that's not really my thing. Uh, have you tried maybe like a, I don't know a temple or something? The temples already. Half of know. the temples aren't having are having other issues where things aren't working. We're still going to need them, Mary. Excuse me, but are you actually saying that a threat to the citizen, Mary? Is not your worry? Oh, I'm just saying I uh, don't really know if we're equipped to handle zombies. I mean, that's uh, that's a weird sort of thing. I mean, we just do, you know, sort of day-to-day -day, uh, looking out for thieves and and such, uh, uh, keeping the, the streets clean. I, I don't know. Uh, this zombie thing, I... What do you want me to do? Start arresting zombies and haul them, hauling them in? That's that's a weird, that's a weird sort of thing. I I don't know. Or you could just be ready to deal with them when they pop up. I'll go 
we'll find Captain Jennifer and talk to talk to talk to her too. I think you'll have a hard time convincing uh, city guards with uh, nothing more than clubs to go go in and start tangling with zombies. I mean, that's that's uh, that's a tall order. I just wanted you aware so that you can make sure others are aware. It could be a problem. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll let uh, my captain know and uh, lieutenants uh, Phileas and Marlock, and uh, we'll talk about it and you know see if there's anything we can do. Uh, maybe we'll uh, you know send out an alert or something. And, let people know there's something going on and lock their doors, I guess, is the best they could do. Is there no bell or combination of things to tell people to shut their doors, stay inside? It's like a freaking riot or whatever? It's not a riot yet, Katera. I'm just saying something to keep the people flipping indoors and secure so they're not letting anybody at them. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I've got, uh, you know, 30 city guards. i uh, got uh, uh, about 10 of them on shift right now. I'll have to go around and find them and uh, let them know to spread the word. That's, uh, that's about the best I can do right now. Maybe I can wake up. Uh, uh, another ten, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's a, it's a big order that you're asking for here. Well, that's a start. I'll go talk to the captain too. Okay. And um, yeah, so this is a different captain than the one she was thinking to look for, or is this someone way at the on the west side too? The one that you just talked to is Chief Bran. Uh, there's Captain Jennifer, who's also of the city guard that he said he'll talk to. Uh, but if you want to look for Captain Luke uh, up at the barracks, that's on the north side. Okay. Uh, we'll finish our business at the inn. And then it might be, I, while everyone's gathering bags, I'll go talk to Captain Luke. Are you sure you're safe by yourself? Do you want one person to accompany you? It would be my honor to follow you, war leader. <laughs> I have to head north as well to get my stuff and get my stuff while you're talking. Yeah, that that's fine. Uh, sure, Tempest, that's fine too. Okay, and since Miri is slowed with encumbrance, I'll be playing uh, the long strider loot getting her up to 30, and the two of us can keep pace and uh, boogie down to the temple in uh, the inn. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so you guys uh, <clears throat> make your way back to the inn. When you get there, uh, the cleric of Torm is standing outside, and you can hear uh, banging on the door from the inside. Ah, uh, too late. Hey, so it's the two of us, me and Miri, they're still on their journey. So um, it's just me and Miri. We see the priest there. I tell Miri to head into the temple and get whatever she needs, and I go and walk towards uh, the priest of Torm. Yeah, Mary's not going to listen to that until she has ascertained that her mother is okay. Because if mom's not okay, that's that's not going to fly. Right. I forgot that. My apologies. Of course you want to know your mom is all right. Let's go and find out what's up. All right. So I'm going to walk up to the other cleric and demand to know where my mother is. I haven't seen anybody come in or out. I opened the door and uh, was beset upon by a madman inside. I don't know the status of anything else at the moment. Now, when we left, was her mom still there? I thought we just left uh, the other clerics and her mom. The other cleric off. would be my mom. Yeah, there were other clerics that were in the inn. Uh, with him when you left. 
but but her mother was in there when we left. Uh, yes. And yes, the innkeeper was tied up when you left. So I am going to want to get in there. Um, I would strongly... Re, Miri, Miri, whoever in there is gone. It was your mother. It's not your mother now. Uh, I'm going to cast Sense Good and Evil. It doesn't work. It Brick. So it's something about being inside the city that's making our magic not work. Ryan, is there any windows in there? There are. I want to go to a window and see WTF is going on inside. Okay, uh, make a perception check. Uh, the, the, the window is pretty grimy, and uh, you're not getting a very good look in there. You can see uh, a little bit of motion, but that's about it. Nothing I can target or uh, try and use the thunderclap on, obviously. No. I spit on the window and use my sleeve, you know, wincing all the time, ruining the fabric, seeing if I can clean it and get a better look inside or if the crap's all in the inside and it doesn't work. Okay. Reroll. Sure. Uh, you take a look inside the window. You can see the chair where the innkeeper uh, is still struggling against the ropes. Uh, you can see blood around his mouth as you're staring in the window. All of a sudden, uh, one of the uh, clerics from the Temple of Foltus that had been uh, inside comes slamming up against the window right in front of your face, gnashing his teeth and trying to bite you through the glass. Oh, bloody hell. One of the damn fool clerics got close enough to get bit, and he turned. Miri, yes. do you have any spells? Mom is dead. And it was definitely a male cultist, not mum, that bashed against? That's right. Potentially, she could have fled upstairs and locked herself in. She could still be her. However, I can't find out because my magic isn't working. All I can say is it's foolhardy with a group of zombies inside for us to open the door and rush in. If your mom is turned, she's turned. If she's not, us going in and getting turned will do her no damn good. We need to wait for the party to get here. Yes. Um, Mary is going to go back to the Cleric of Torm and ask if he can sense anything inside, explain that her magic isn't working. Um, yes, he can sense uh, both evil and good. Um, it's as uh, Katyara uh, guessed that uh, there are some good people upstairs. I'm going to run across the street gather my things and ask someone to bring a ladder even before she does that i'm looking to see if there's any ivy trellises easily gripped stone or you know uh cracks in the grout for me to like shimmy up and get in through the second floor or open a window and let them out you could definitely uh, climb the side of this building. It's uh, it's not like it would be a, a terribly difficult climb. It's fairly rough. Okay, I'm going to try and... Uh, is there a path up to where my room was? Yes. Okay, I go shimmying up. Uh, do I need to roll for uh, athletics or anything? Yeah, athletics roll, please. Yeah, you managed to climb up to uh, the window of your room. I try and shimmy the window open. Okay, make a sleight of hand check. Oh, no yeah. Problem. Yeah, you pop that window open, no problem, and you can get into your room. All right, once in my room, do I see anybody you, else there? 
You do. There's a there's a group of clerics up here, including Miri's mum. All right, nip out the window or jump out. I don't care. Get out of here and make your you get down and let Miri know you're safe. She's fretting. Do you have any rope? Oh, for God's sakes! It's only twenty feet. You can live through that. I suppose that's true. But if you had rope, it would be easier. I used my rope to tie the up downstairs. The fool cleric got too close to. Oh, very, very well. We'll all, we'll all climb down. I am staying there to make uh, sure that no zombie comes up for whatever reason and tries to get in while they're buggering off. How long is it going to take me to get back with a ladder? Um, it it's going to take you longer than it's going to take them to uh, to climb down. Uh, by the time you get back with a ladder or with somebody with a ladder, uh, they're already on the ground. Uh, one of them is uh, nursing uh, a sore leg uh, from falling from the window, uh, but the others are okay. Okay, so they can probably be quickly splinted for the sore leg and treated the way that most healers treat things. Yeah, um, and they let you know that uh, the innkeeper turned and uh, one of the brothers uh, tried to uh, tried to deal with him, but uh, tripped in the effort and got bitten and turned as well. Um, so they all barricaded themselves upstairs, uh, but there's only the two zombies uh, that should be downstairs and one of them still tied to a chair. All right, I'm still upstairs. I, I'm leaning out listening. And then I uh, speak to them below, and I'm like, I'll stay up here. When the rest of the party shows up, when you guys come in, I'll go from behind. Hopefully we can flank and deal with them fast. I think it might be wiser to just burn down the building. That's me home! Yes, but it's infected with zombies. And you purify things by burning them. You're not much for half measures, are you? Zombies are not something for which half measures tend to work. But, but it's one zombie that we need to deal with, and then we could just, like, freaking throw stones to kill the other. I'm going to butt in and say, are we... How long is this taking so that we have a judgment on how quickly we're getting back? Actually, don't we need to swap uh, and let them resolve their time with uh, the captain? Yeah, by the time you guys are arguing about burning down the inn, uh, they've reached the, uh, the, the barracks for the army. Okay, uh, so once they get there, Izmir is going to head in and look for Captain Luke. All right, you find him. What are you going to tell him? More or less exactly what's been going on. I don't know if we want to go through the spiel again. So, Sure, no, no problem. Um, he agrees that it's a, uh, a major concern, and he will send his forces uh, outside the city while holding back um, a third of them in the city to deal with any problems that might arise. All right, that sounds good. I don't actually know how many are out there, but better safe than sorry. <laughs> uh, Captain, I don't know what it's going to take to deal with this. Will you need me around, or should I continue investigating what's going on? Um, the I, I would appreciate it if you did uh, continue on with the excellent job that you've been doing. Uh, see if you can help out in any way. Uh, with the zombie incursion, we will, of course, have our forces um, sweeping the, the farms. Uh, but if you wish to join in those efforts, uh, we would be much obliged. Well, for now, I'll keep up the investigation side of things, and I'll let you know if anything changes. Okay, so as, as soon as you're done telling him about this, he's already barking orders at, uh, at the troops. Uh, to organize and uh, is off to go 
and meet with the major and update him on what's going on. Okay, and do we notice Yurin is back or is she still gone? <laughs> Uh, her house is fairly close to the army barracks, uh, so she manages to get back uh, before you guys are done talking to Captain Luke. All right. Um, I guess we'll head back to the inn. She is now encumbered, though, and only moves at 20. Okay. <laughs> so we'll be walking back a little slower. Uh, how heavy is your stuff? Don't forget, it's the variant, so it's like five times your strength for your load. And she can carry 55 pounds, and she's carrying 85, 82 and a half. Um, Tempest is good up until... Uh... I'm so glad I uh, modified what I carried. <laughs> Yeah, upon seeing you struggling, Tempest is just going to say, I'd be very happy to carry your bags for you. We don't have a lot of time to wait. Thank you. And I'll shoulder the bag and we will hustle. And I'm going to assume we're rushing down to catch up to the others. Dash time. Yeah, it's uh, still going to take some time. So um, before you guys arrive, uh, Miri and Kachara, have you guys come to a resolution for what you want to do? All right, he's talked me out of burning the place down. Yay! It's just zombies are very, very evil. And Miri is of the opinion that very, very evil things should be killed with fire. That's fine. We do the surgical strike, take down the two, drag their bodies out, and you can have yourself a bonfire, and we'll run around it, skipping back and forth, going lol de -lol. And we're getting back just in time to hear this? Yeah. Sounds like you guys have been having fun. Not <gasps> really. They're zombies. We've got the innkeeper still tied. One of of the bleeding clerics was stupid enough to fall down, get bit. He turned. Everybody else is fine. So we got to bust in, take down one mobile zombie, and then just poke a trapped zombie to death. I'm still using fire. Fire can be a last resort. How did you get everyone out? They nipped uh, down the down the wall. I opened the door. They, uh, the, I came up. They were in my room. They nipped out the window. When Mary is talking about burning it with fire, she's talking using sacred flame to take out the zombies now. I see no reason why this should be risky. One person throws the door. I will be waiting at it. If the rest of you can attack from range... We should be able to kill this thing quickly and efficiently. Tempest, I'll flank the beast and give you a vantage. Thank you. Miri rather use her crossbow. Her I mom. try and undo the latch to my door as silently as possible. And I go back to the window and I'm like saying, okay. Do we do this on account so I know when to get down? Um, if somebody wants to just throw the front door to the to the inn, then I can be waiting outside for it. Uh, I, but if you want to infiltrate through your room, I'm I'm good to follow you, Kitera. I was thinking more simultaneous. So, like when you throw the door, I'm like at the, nearly the foot of the stairs. So I can do a rush at the same time. So either you get the first strike and I hit it from behind, or I get the first strike and you hit it after it turns around to deal with me. Deal. If you think you can sneak in, I will wait for one minute. We'll throw the door open. And when you hear my war cry, that's your symbol to go. Is it still smacking the door? Yes. 
Uh, can we lure it away from the door so we can open it without it bursting out here? That was my stealth roll. Okay. So I'm going up and I'm coming down the stairs and I'm waiting to hear him go with his yell. Like I'm three steps up. I can't see him. He can't see me, but I know where the door is because I've been here long enough. And the zombie doesn't appear to notice you. I've got my halberd ready using taking advantage of as much reach as it'll give me. So just making sure that I'm sort of at the very back apex of uh, of the door when, when somebody wants to throw it open for me. So do we have any volunteers? It's on. Uh, it's right at the door. I don't know if we'll get it open without it bursting out. Can Is there a way we can get it out of the way without actually getting in there? Is there a back door? Uh, yes, there's a back door into the kitchens. Mary's going to go around to the back door and open that. I have no idea she's doing this, right? Nope. Mary just kind of wants to create a distraction. Okay, oh, change change in plan. Um, lovely. I, I, I will wait for your distraction. Basically, I'm trying to pull the zombie's attention away from the door, but I will have the space to step back and slam the kitchen door as soon as it comes at me. The, uh, the zombie does hear the sound and starts to sprint towards the back door. As soon as I hear a noise, I rush out and attack the zombie if I am within the 30 feet. You are. Use Meryl, open the door for Tempest. <laughs> and Miri slams the back door shut and, and runs around back to the front. Okay, now is this surprise on the zombie or do we yeah. roll a net? You can get an attack in on it first. Okay, so I would like to charge across the room and take an attack on it as it has been pulled away from the front door. Um, now, I believe that because of your inspiration, uh, Kitira, I get advantage. Is that right? No. What happens is you roll. If you have a crap roll, you can roll 1d6 and add it to uh, the attack chance. Gotcha. Thank you. Yareen, will you join me at the door? I will. Lovely. We'll keep it inside. <laughs> I didn't say it, but can I be raging for this attack? <laughs> Yes, you can. That's your second rage of the day. That is my second rage, and I am out. Okay, you charge at it and spear it in the back. Uh, Katiara, you hit it as well. All right. And now I'm doing my offhand attack, and I don't get the bonus. It's just a 1d20, right? No, you get your bonus to hit. You just don't get the bonus to damage. Meh, it's something. Uh, zombie's looking in a real bad way after you guys uh, jump on it and attack it. And uh, everybody roll initiative, please. So I was supposed to add three to mine. So can that be 17? Yes. Okay, so Yuzmir, you're going first. Okay, uh, from the doorway, she is going to aim and take an Eldritch Blast at the zombie. Which does not hit, I'm assuming. That it, it, it does hit, actually. Its AC is 8. Oh, sweet. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, you hit it with an Eldritch Blast, and uh, its body uh, appears to crumple, and yet somehow it manages to carry on. Uh, next is Yairin. Can you refresh me on firing a bow into combat? Uh, the enemy gets uh, some cover, so it's just a little bit harder to hit. Okay, then I would like to do that. I guess I should have taken that into account with the Eldritch Blast, but I forgot, so whatever. You hit, and it falls dead. 
Uh, you've still got a struggling zombie on the ground and uh, tied to a chair. Am I allowed to shoot a second arrow or no? Um, I believe you only get one attack per round until you get extra attack. So, no. Thank you. I just wasn't sure how that worked. Uh, Tempest would like to posit the idea of, do we want to let the cleric see if they can cure this one? Or do we take it apart? All right. I was, wait, uh, is the other zombie down and it's just a uh, poor turn Jordan? Correct. And now the moral dilemma. Do we just hit him? <laughs> there is no moral dilemma. Jordan isn't there. It is a foul, undead beast responding to some other hideous monster. Even worse than it. Sorry, quick, quick correction. Uh, Jordan was the farmer. He got turned and died a long time ago. This is Raylene, the uh, half-elf innkeeper. My apologies. And, no worries. And, and, and you can see, like, I'm, like, fighting back tears as I say this, because actually this guy is actually my friend, and I can't deal with him in this state. Yeah, unfortunately, Mary is going to put forth, it will be kinder to just kill them so that they're not tortured like this. And they can go back and be with the gods and be happy again. Mary, you wanted to burn. Burn! Yes, I think it would be wisest to simply put them out of their misery and then burn their bodies so that their spirits may be free again. Ismir's going to share a look with Tempest because I think it's going to be one of those two who hits, takes him out. I am just walking up and keeping my hands carefully from his mouth from behind, I stroke his head and I throw my dagger into his eye. Uh, you uh, you stab the dagger into his eye, and he goes still. Rest easy, friend. Say hello to your friends on the other side. Beesmir doesn't look happy either. Yeah, Mary's going to go uh, across the street to the Temple of Foltus and have them prepare up higher for these two so that we can send them on to the next world purified and let them be reborn as angels of heaven or something. As we fade out, you see Katira reaching for the best bottle of brandy in uh, the bar, pouring shots for everyone else and just starting to chug. A toast to the beautiful lives that have been lost. You see me look startled, reach out, and I pull out a...